Hello, grade 10s. In today's lesson, we will be looking at the history of trigonometry and some of the uses of trigonometry. We will join Reynos, who will give us an idea of who uses trigonometry and how it is used in everyday life. Let's join him now as he starts by telling us about the word trigonometry. If you look up the word trigonometry in a dictionary, you will see it comes from two Greek words. Trigonon meaning triangle and metron meaning measuring. Trigonometry is based on the study of right angled triangles. That is, triangles that include an angle of 90 degrees. In trigonometry, we study the ratios of the sides of triangles. Trigonometry also deals with the ways in which the sides and angles of triangles are related to each other. This form of mathematics has been around since 150 BC, which means before the birth of Christ. Look at this picture of Hipparchus of Nicaea. He lived from 170 to 125 BC. He was fascinated by astronomy. He studied the stars and wanted to find out as much as he could about the earth. He was the first known person to discover formulae for trigonometry. Can you believe that people were doing such advanced maths so many years ago? Yet we still use this system today. Do you know anything about the uses of trigonometry? It was used to solve problems about the positions and movements of the planets and stars. Listen to this. In this book, it says that Muslims use trigonometry to navigate across the desert to Mecca. Mecca, found in western Saudi Arabia, was the birthplace of the Prophet Muhammad. Every year, millions of Muslims make a pilgrimage to the city. In this book, I also read that trigonometry has many practical uses in civil engineering, architecture, and navigation. Engineers and surveyors actually use trigonometry when they work. Surveyors can measure the heights of mountains without actually having to climb these mountains. Do you know what a surveyor does? Let's hear what a surveyor had to say. I'm a professional land surveyor. Um, to be a land surveyor, one needs a degree, four-year degree at university. In, in that degree, you do three years of maths. Um, most of my work is involved in measurement and production of plans, whether they're topographical plans, uh, subdivisions of properties, uh, calculation of areas and volumes. Living in the city, most of my work is involved in um, development of properties, so that would be cluster developments, um, preparation of contour plans for engineers to do their planning with, uh, architects would need our plans, uh, town planners, all sorts of professionals involved in property use the plans that we produce. And what does an architect do? Let's hear what an architect had to say. We did uh, courses in maths, applied maths and physics, probably purely because architecture is a mix of art and science, amongst other things. The component of art and science is, is, is a critical mix that needs to be developed and understood within the profession. Um, in so far as the involvement of maths in that, um, maths is, a, is, is obviously in terms of building, in terms of construction, is an obvious uh, component of the profession. It's an obvious component of design. And it's absolutely necessary, especially with regard to issues such as trigonometry, angles, uh, those aspects of mathematics, um, that the design of buildings incorporates, obviously, angles, incorporates uh, mathematics. And, and as such, it's a, a, an important aspect of, 
of the training and it's an important aspect of the execution of the profession. From architectural points of view, I think mathematics comes into its own, certainly in terms of things like a basic, let's call it a calculation of sun angles, um, where you may want to determine a particular amount of sun in a building or a shadow that it casts, a courtyard you may be designing at a particular point of the year and you say, well, in midwinter, when the sun is sitting at a maximum height at 12 noon at 45 degrees in Johannesburg, um, you need to know if you're creating a courtyard, what that's going to do in terms of giving the inhabitants of the building sunshine, giving it light, giving it warmth. Modern mathematicians use the discoveries made by mathematicians of very long ago, but they find ways to make the theories more understandable and quicker to use. A surveyor uses a theodolite. Listen to what the surveyor said about using a theodolite. We're going to measure from a known point to an unknown point. This is an electronic theodolite and this will measure the, the distance, the vertical angle and the height. Um, so I'll aim onto the reflector that he's holding on that side there. and measure and there you have the distance and direction from which we can calculate his position and height. Now do you know how one can use this theodolite to find the height of a mountain? Well the surveyor stands at a point quite far from the mountain where he can see the whole mountain. He then draws a picture to capture what he sees. The picture is in the same ratio as the real mountain. What this means is that the smaller picture of the mountain that he has drawn is the same shape as the real mountain. The smaller version and the real version are like similar triangles. Can you recall anything about similar triangles? In similar triangles, the angles in one triangle are all the same sizes as the corresponding angles in the other triangle. But these triangles are not the same size. Let's take a look at two triangles. In triangle ABC, angle B is equal to 90 degrees angle C is equal to 30 degrees, therefore angle A is equal to 60 degrees. Let's go and fill this in on our diagram. Angle A, 60 degrees. Now let us take a look at triangle DEF. Angle E is 90 degrees, angle F is 30 degrees, therefore angle D is 60 degrees. These triangles are called similar because the corresponding angles are the same size. Also, the sides of these triangles are in proportion and this information is particularly important for our surveyor. Once we have completed the work on trigonometry, we will be able to find the angles and distances of objects in the same way that a land server uses electronic theodolite to determine angles and distances of objects. Thank you for joining us, Grade 10s. I hope that you found the history and uses of trigonometry interesting. Remember to try the task video at the end of this section. You'll also be able to learn more about trigonometry on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Thank you for joining us, Grade 10s. Goodbye.